Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. I just got through loading up a few tools in my truck because we're going to take care of a quick little job. Um, a very good friend of my mother-in-law's uh, had a problem with the door jam. It's, it was rotted and she had a price of $800 to repair that and some small little knickknacks around her house. So someone else tried to fix it for her and it was a little bit over their head. So I told her, don't worry about it. I went and looked at it. It's a simple little job. I'm going to take care of it for her. So this right here cost me $26. That's all it's going to cost her to fix this. Now, if you were to repair it yourself, you can save a lot of money. Now, don't get me wrong. You're not going to save $800 because I think that price was out of the ballpark. But you can still save a good bit of money by knowing how to do things yourself. And you'll save a lot of money if you know what's involved with it because she wasn't sure if this was a normal price. That's why she asked me to take a look at it. So let's get started on it. Okay, here we go. What we're gonna do is take this brick molding off first, then we're gonna take the, the inside trim off and we're gonna pull this out. This is one piece. We wanna take this caulk out of here, so we're gonna run a line with the razor knife and get a clean little line right here just to break the caulk loose. That way we can pull this brick molding out without causing damage. A lot of times the brick molding will rot too and you have a little bit right here, easy fix. You don't have to replace it. We'll be able to fix this brick molding. But um, when I replace it, I usually use PVC. I like to use PVC to go back on this because it doesn't rot, it's plastic. Um, the wood will rot and the PVC is already pre-primed. So you put it on here and you just go ahead and paint it. You can check that out, that out at uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, any one of your uh, hardware outlets should have PVC brick molding. We can take this out the way. Now a, a way to walk it out without causing damage would be to take one bar and put it in your crack, take your other bar and put it right above it and you work one as you go and you slowly pull it that way you're not tearing anything off. See back here you have your alarm system wires so you'll be careful with that. I thought it was a doorbell at first but it's not. Either way you want to make sure you watch watch for things like that. We're going to slowly pull this thing out. It probably has a nail in there. You see how this is starting to come loose. That's all right. We're just going to be careful we don't mess it up. This tool right here has a carbide blade that will cut nails. So I'm going to slip it in. was it. That little tool is super handy and you'll see as we get this job done just how handy it is. So I'm gonna leave this out because I wanna I need to take that out right there without damaging it. So we're gonna take this wire and we're gonna tuck it up out the way over here. Okay we're gonna need to take these strike plates off and get these out the way. This is a tool for taking trim molding off of your car and it works great for things like this. It's You put it in and you can pop your clips off. So I can get in little tight spots with this without causing much damage. And we go back over, caulk will cover that. You see I can open it up. Once I open it up a little bit, get my hammer in there, over here slowly walk it out, just like I did the other. The trim is just like the other, it's, it's tacked in right here, so I'm going to pull the trim all the way off the bottom and we'll kind of twist it and pull it out without causing damage. There you go. This piece is out. Now we're going to have to cut the top. When you buy a door jam, it's going to have a notch on the top and the bottom so it can go on the right or the left side of your door. The top is going to be notched, so you just cut the bottom off to length that you need. Now, 
You see how this goes in an L, okay? What we're gonna do is take this and we're gonna take the shims from behind it on here out and then we'll be able to pop this away. So this separates away from the top and I'll be able to get a blade in there and just cut it and take it out if I have to do it that way. Um, if I did not have room, like I do here with these shims back here, if I didn't have room, what I would do is cut this straight across here and work it with my tool. And as soon as I have a gap, I could cut this and just pull those little pieces out. If you're doing construction, you really want to have one of these. See those shims back there? They're not even nailed. I always nail mine when I put them in, but I'm glad they didn't. It makes it easier for me. We take this, now I can start working it off of there because like you said, it's, it's joined right here with a rabbit joint. We'll push it out. See how it came loose? That's all we need to do. Miss Joyce told me 10 years ago they replaced her door and cut the wire and charged her to rehook it up and didn't hook it up. So it went into the wall here. She's just going to go back with wireless. We're going to cut this and just get it out the way. I measured from this bottom right here to just below where the, uh, the threshold goes. Here's my mark. I will double check it before I cut this. And we're gonna take and peel this off. I will cut that with a razor knife right there, but we're gonna peel this back because we don't want the saw to hit that. It'll mess it up. And all you do is slide this stuff out. Simple. All right, I'm gonna flip it over, cut it from the back side right at this point because that way I can have a nice flat piece of wood to cut. I'm using my Works Exact Track for this. Um, this is a great little portable saw. I cut a lot of things with it. It's perfect for a DIYer. Um, if you were doing super heavy duty work with something, you're not gonna want this. I would like to see them come out with a professional series one because uh, it's a great little tool, great design. This right here rides up, and this is aluminum. So it rides up, and it goes against any board that you put on here, a one by. You can take a one by and run it down a whole piece of plywood. When you lock it down, or even use a saw guide, I can clamp it down on a piece of plywood. This rides right on it, and exactly where your line is, that's where the saw guide goes, and it's gonna give you zero clearance cut. It means that right where this is, that's where your blade's gonna be, so you don't have to to measure back like you would on uh, other saws. What we're gonna do here is take a one by, and I set it back behind here, okay, where the other frame is gonna go. And it's a piece of the scrap from this, okay, or from the old one. So I'll take that and I'll set it there, and that's where my frame's gonna go, okay? So what you're gonna need is to get this angle right here. It's gonna go just like this. And the top fits, but you see this part right here has to be trimmed to match, to match the angle or you're gonna have a big gap right there. That's why we're gonna get this measurement, transfer it over to this and cut this part out. So, we'll take this right here on that angle that we made, the same angle, and I'll see what it is trace it across and if you look you can line it up right here you see how it's on number two that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it up right there I matched my square up with this and then I'm just transferring it over I take my hand put on here as a guide so we'll just walk it out Now, you can take it right here and rip it through.
Okay, I'm using uh, two inch galvanized nails in my gun. I always use galvanized nails when you're working with exterior. I always buy galvanized nails for my guns because you never know if you're going to shoot it outside or inside and it doesn't hurt to have it inside with galvanized, but you have to have it outside with galvanized. All right. That looks like it's going to be a nice fit. We're going to put our shims here and make sure we line everything up and then I'll start tacking it back further. I want, I want that back tight too. Where it won't flex. All right. We're ready. Make sure you, you don't put your nail too far in here into this track where you have to put your gasket back on. Now it ain't going nowhere. All right. So what I'm going to do is make sure my frame sits in there well. Take a look at it from this side. Okay. We're good. I'm going to put my shims back here and tie it in. Had a pretty large gap in there, and I don't want to just put some shims back there. I want to have some solid wood, especially where my strike plate goes. So I cut a couple of pieces of plywood to put back there. I'm going to cut one, another one because I want one here in the middle and at the bottom. I made some plywood shims that'll fit tight on some spots and then over here I'll just use some shims that, that I have, small shims and the shims that they came out of it. But I put a piece of plywood right where the strike plate is because I wanted something solid back there where this screws in. You want that to be strong right where your uh, strike plate is. I have a couple of nails up here that I want to get out. So I'm going to snip them. Perfect. Now we'll tap this back in carefully. Nice. All right. Everything's still looking good. Next, I'm just going to cut that shim that's sticking out right here. So, let's get it. This is only going to take a second. We'll pop this back in. Okay. Perfect. Everything's sitting just right. We're going to go ahead and put our trim back in here. I have a video on this, but really, there's nothing to it. You take this piece right here, and you're just going to tuck it in the slot. You're going to tuck it in from the top, right here. And it just slips right down into the groove. There you have it. Well, you saw me using this saw during the video, and I'm going to be giving one away. I'm going to give you a saw with the battery, the charger, and the blade that comes with it. So you'll have the whole complete kit to use this. This is an excellent little DIY saw, and I'm sure you're going to like it. Now, we're going to choose one lucky winner from the first 200 people that comment. So make sure you drop a comment on me. Subscribe because you have to be a subscriber and you have to have your notifications set so I can get in touch with you. When we choose a winner, I will send it to you. Once you get that reply, you have to contact me within 10 days to claim this because Works will choose another winner if you don't. So make sure you get back with me. I'll give you all the information you need. All you have to do is go to paulstoolbox.com once I give you that information and I'll give you the link, you give me your shipping information, your mailing information, and we'll have one sent out to you. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out paulstoolbox.com for all my archive videos, and I'll see you guys in the next project.